Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. reversed and on the chuck and you can see I didn't go through yet so I don't want to take much off the top I've got my sweat back spindle gouge we're gonna turn this on bring up the speed and you can see how well that recessed tenons holding right now and it's like making a bead again and you have to fly your arm out by the way because you don't have you have to lean over the lathe to make this cut I could slide the headstock down to the end and then I could be doing a supported cut but I'd have to shove uh, Brian outside the door of the shop because there'd be no room for him. <laughs> so anyway, all I'm doing is just making a shape. And again, use your imagination to make the shape you want. So you just go at it gently and just take a little bit of wood off at a time. So I'm trying to make it probably high on the top. I want to do a little curve, a little OG shape in, which is kind of like an S shape, and then sweep it back out. Start taking too much wood, just bring the tool back a little bit, pick up the cut again. There you go. And we're going to keep going like this. I don't want to take much off the top, remember. So it's coming like so. The whole idea is to give this the impression that it's lightweight and that it grew in the forest with all the little fairies. So, once I get this shape the way I want it, all I'm going to do is sand again, take it off the lathe, and we move on to the next mushroom. Now we're ready for our, I'd probably say if you found this in the woods, don't eat it, mushroom. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna start with the top because it's a very simple process. Make the cap and we hollow it by drilling it. So that should be pretty simple, pretty easy to do. So I already have a two inch by two inch by about three and a half inch piece of bobinga in the chuck. I already turned it down to a cylinder and put a tenon on the end. You'll also notice if you can see over here, I have a black line mark. Well, that is because, where do I have it? Oh, it's on the lathe right here. Um, I have my Forstner bit ready to go, and this is a one and a half inch wide Forstner bit. So we're gonna drill a hole into there. That's the hollowing part. So I made the mark there, so I know not to go past that when I start making the edge here, because if I make it too thin, then all of a sudden it becomes a shorter mushroom. But anyway, we're gonna start making a very slight elongated bead here. We're not gonna do the entire shape. I just wanna kinda lay it out. So I know where I'm working. That's as far as I want to go there. Now, as so you come up to about here, this is going to be where it ends. So we'll just kind of get that shape going. And gently make that curve. I'm using the uh, tool handle into my side and my body to give me a little support. That looks good. We will switch hands and go left-handed and do the same thing to come here. All I'm wanting to do is get that curve just smoothed out. And that looks pretty good right there. It's a little heavy on the bottom, which I like. It's a little lighter on the top because if it's in the wild, I think the top is gonna to be thinner probably. And then I'm thinking it's gonna end up here somewhere since we're drilling about a inch and a half deep hole, plus another quarter inch, plus a little bit more for that quarter inch hole we have to put in there. So I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm going to move the tool rest out of the way and get the tailstock and bring it up. And this time I'm not going to use the gauge on here because I just put a piece of tape on this shaft and I've got it marked as you can see there. So I'm going to turn this back on 
Turn the speed down since we're drilling. It's gonna get a little smoky here. Got locked in and we're gonna advance this in. And the thing I like about Forstner bits is they're self-ejecting. You can see how the shavings are coming out and it's not building up on the inside. It is getting warm, <laughs> but we're almost there. And the biggest trick is once you hit the depth you want, turn the lathe off before you bring this back or you'll get that horrible screeching sound which some say I'm famous for. And use this to pull it out. Now, I'm gonna drill a quarter inch hole in there and then I'm gonna finish refining the shape and sand it and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna reverse it and finish the top. Now I have that sanded to 400 grit. I still left a hefty tenon on the end because I'm gonna be doing an interesting finish. I'm gonna be using a hut wax finish, and this is a two-part wax. The brown one does a little bit of polishing, brings a shine up, and then this is like carnauba or something, really puts a really bright shine on it. And I'm just using paper towels for the application and a little speed and a little heat. So we're gonna bring this up and we're gonna bring the speed up. In this case, speed and heat are great because it helps melt, melt, melt the wax. So I'm just gonna to touch it to the surface. And you can see I'm just putting a very fine little finish on there. Just not a whole lot of it comes off. Now, watch it change colors as it melts in, see? So it's polishing, you can actually see a shine starting to appear on there. Now as you move the towel back and forth, you'll see the shine change a little bit. You might not be able to see it right here, but in person when you're doing this, you'll see it in your shop. You wanna make sure you get all the foggy looking stuff off there because that's the residual wax. Now we're going to switch to the lighter color, and this really pops it out. There we go, got a little light coat on there. If you put way too much on there, it gets really sticky and it's hard to get it off of there, by the way. So the reason I'm doing this now is I'm having to use pressure in addition to the heat to make this all melt. If you reverse this, like we're going to do in a minute on the chuck jaws, it could pop off. Also, when you're working on this end, the jaws are right there and you could be getting your knuckles busted. But look at the shine on there right now. I'm going to stop this real quick so you can see the finished product. That is sweet looking. That babinga is beautiful. So all I'm going to do now is part this off and then we're going to reverse this on my pin jaws. Here's the top of our mushroom. And we're gonna put it on the pin jaws. And pin jaws, I don't know why they're named that other than they might be able to grab a pin, but they stick out a ways and you slide this on and it's straight. So the reason we drilled a hole for the hollowing is because of this jaw. Now I'm gonna open the jaws and I'm gonna bring it off the bottom a little bit. And one thing you gotta be very careful with is you don't over open, it'll crack it. You're gonna feel resistance right there. It's a tick more and now that's solidly held right there. Now, I parted it off because I didn't want a bunch of wood on the end to turn either because pin jaws, when they do a recess like this, you don't have a dovetail in it. So it could pop off. It probably won't, but we want to be safe. So I'm going to grab my spindle gouge here and just clean this end up here. And again, you can see why we did the finishing up here because we can't get our hands in there to do that finishing or even sanding there. So we'll get that out of the way first. Come in here. Cooperate with me. Thank you. <laughs> We're starting right on the center, so we gotta be careful. And we're just gonna nibble this down just a little bit. Just shape it out. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand, starting on the end here, all our grits, and we're gonna blend it into where it's 400 grit here. So we're not gonna do the whole thing, we're just gonna do a little bit at a time. As we sand, we're gonna extend it each way, each grit a little further, so we blend into that 400 grit. And then we're gonna apply our finish again on the tip and everything will be blended together and looking really nice.
when you do off center turning, that's how we're going to make the stem. Um, you can go a lot of different ways and get some really unique looking shapes. So I just want to kind of show you a little experiment I did. This is two of the same. What do I mean by that? That means what it is, I took my blank and then I drew a dot about right here, went straight to the other side or straight across from it and drew a dot there. And then when I turned this, I started turning it with it on centers and then I moved it to the off center ones to do the middle. And you can see how I got that really wild shape. This mushroom is on its own trip. <laughs> I thought that was a little extreme. So I worked with a little bit more to get this look, which I like. This looks more like a mushroom in the wild. They kind of go crooked and they got a little bit of undulation to their shape. Well, this one I marked this as two opposite. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a mark and you don't have to go very far. A little bit means a lot. I'm gonna make a dot right there. Okay, now I'm rotating this. I'm gonna make a dot opposite. So the other dot is right here. We're making this dot right here. So those are marks as to where we're gonna mount this on the lathe to create this shape. Now I've taken, it's about a six and a half inch long piece of wood, by the way, uh, maple, which is really pretty. And it's one and a half inch square. So I've rounded it down now, right now. It's on the center holes. So I'm going to grab, oh, let's see who looks sharp. <laughs> that one looks good. Uh, a wider spindle gouge here. It's about three eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna start narrowing the center. So pick up speed a little bit. So we're just gonna come in here and just start dishing it out. I want to probably do about a third here in the middle, leave a third on either end. Right now things are calm and cool because we're not on the off center part yet. But you'll love this once we get there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take this down to where I think the diameter should be for that stem. So let's go here. I actually think I grabbed a dull tool. Let me switch up and go to one that's got more of an edge on it. There we go. Okay. Oh yeah, much different. You can tell when you're having to push the tool through the wood that you need to sharpen or grab another tool. Let's just keep going here. Make this a little narrower. Come back again. There we go. Bring it down a little more. I want to make a straighter shaft now. So we'll come here like so. There we go. And you want to leave bumps. You don't want to make this perfectly shaped because in the wild, it's going to be kind of lumpy. So there, we'll just leave a lump there. Come back and kind of smooth that part out there. Now, here comes the fun part. Okay. We've got the offset marks on here. So I'm gonna bring my tailstock loose. First one I'm gonna do is line up the one on the headstock. Now you can see I have this off center point right here. So the goal is we were there, we're gonna be here now. And this is gonna be way, way wonky once it gets going. I use my, uh, my awl to poke a hole in there so I can make sure I hit that hole perfectly. Now, you have to check to make sure you're not gonna hit anything on the lathe. And one thing I need to grab just for safety sake off camera here is my face mask, which is really dirty right now. <laughs> because if anything goes wrong, that's coming at me. Or maybe at you. We'll see how it works out. Then turn this back on and now you can see the joy of off-sitter turning. Isn't that wild looking? So I want to start blending this with that. So we're going to come up here and start turning air. And the reason I went to a wider spindle gouge is because it's thicker metal and it gives me a much sturdier, uh, not grip, it doesn't vibrate when you're hanging out over the tool rest. If I had a smaller one, I'd have a lot of problems because I get a lot of vibration. Now remember, we're going to have a tenon on both ends of this, so this wood right here is going to be kind of wasted away. Also, this is going to be the top, at least for right now, it's going to be the top of the stem. So it's going to be narrower because it has to fit inside of that inch and a half hole that we drilled in the cap. And you see how wild looking this is. So we're going to come here. If you look through there, you can see it's thicker here, right? It's thinner there, thicker here. So we want to try to blend those two areas. We're going to use sandpaper to help get us through this. And that will help a lot. So I'm going to come back here and take a little bit off this. Now I'm going to stop this and let's see what our progress is. 
that's pretty good. But see this big honking thing right here? I want to take that down more because that's going to be too hard to sand off. So I'm going to work on this a little bit more, move to the other end, and then we're going to have the fun, the joy of sanding this. Now, I've taken this and put it back on the center marks, right? And I've taken the tenons down a bit, but not all the way because I want to sand. And look how out around that is. How do I sand that, Tim? Well, it's really easy, especially now that I have these backing pads on my sandpaper. We're going to turn this on and no, we're not going to sand at that speed. We're going to slow it way down. And if you slow this down enough, you're going to find a sweet spot to where you're going to feel the sandpaper touching the wood all the way around. You might get a good massage out of this. But anyway, the whole purpose is to get this sanded down. And what our goal is, is that we're going to sand it enough. We're going to take these transitions out to where it's going to be nice and smooth. You won't see those sharp edges. You can actually see it's rounding off already. So once I get that done and have it sanded down to 400 grit, I'm just going to go ahead and make my quarter inch tenons on the end. And then we're ready to put a finish on some of this stuff and put it all together. Oh, there is our finished tall mushroom, and you can see the shape looks pretty cool. I got the top on it, and actually I put a finish on there right now, and it's called Danish oil, and it's a hand rubbed Danish oil. You can see how the zebra wood's popping out. It likes it, and I don't have a hole for it yet. We'll just set it right there. But you know what's gonna really like this is wait till you see the lace wood. This stuff is incredible. That is just beautiful, isn't it? But anyway, that is how you make a high-end mushroom. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. And until the next time, ah, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.